Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Weather 101 forecast. We are having a fantastic start to your Wednesday morning. Now, in this forecast, it's another exciting one. We're looking at the winter outlook. This is some updated data from about a month or two ago when we did look at our preliminary winter outlook. This is still rather preliminary. However, you know, we're, we're getting closer to winter. We're getting a lot better data. Uh, the Enzo evolution is kind of coming together a lot better. So we, we have a better understanding of what we're going to be seeing in terms of uh, a La Nina, which I'll get into later in this forecast. First, though, if you guys are new to the channel, consider liking, subscribing, um, and, and leave a comment down below. Let me know where you guys are watching from on this Wednesday morning. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the forecast. So starting off here, we're going to look at something already different. As you see in our Enzo alert system status right here, we are under a La Nina watch, whereas last time we had no watches whatsoever. We were expecting an Enzo neutral winter. So essentially, these are two separate patterns, and I'll explain these a little bit more in depth in a little bit. However, the moral of the story here is now we are under a La Nina watch, which is meaning our SST temperatures, our sea surface temperatures, compared to seasonal averages, are below average and will actually be below negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. Once again, I'll touch more on that in a moment. But it does say a transition from Enzo neutral to La Nina is likely in the next couple of months right there with a 71% chance of a La Nina during October through December 2025. Thereafter, La Nina is favored, but chances decrease to 54% in December 2025 through February of 2026. So essentially within the next, I mean, right now, I mean, we're talking October through December, we have a 71% chance of a La Nina. So in the next three months, we have a 71% chance to see La Nina conditions. However, as we go more into the December, which is about three months out from now to February, so about three to six months out from now, those chances decrease to about a 54% chance that will stay within La Nina conditions. Now, I want to show you where we even look at when we talk about Enzo evolution. So we see this little area here just southwest of California, just off the coast of South America here. This is our Nino 3.4 region. Essentially, this is where we look at sea surface temperatures to see whether they are below average, above average, or neutral. Um, we do see a lot more blue in these areas right now rather than uh, yellows or oranges, which is indicating colder than average temperatures out there in the Nino 3.4 region. <coughs> Excuse me. Which, therefore, is uh, pushing for more of that La Nina pattern, which... These temperatures have decreased a little bit more since the last time, last month, when we recorded this forecast. That's once again why we are seeing a La Nina watch. Now, as we go through the Nino region SST departures, this is recent evolution, I want you to kind of just exit these ones out or just cross these out. We're only looking at the Nino 3.4 region, which once again, we kind of went over. Uh, you see this is Mexico right here, just southwest of Mexico, just off of the South American coast here. This is our Nino 3.4 region right here. You see an overlapping of uh, yellow and red, which let me go ahead and actually make this marker a little bit smaller just so you guys can see this. I'll go ahead and draw that out again. This is your Nino 3.4 region. This is where we look to see the SSTs in that area. Now, another thing that we can do here just to kind of show you this, I want you to, we're going to go ahead and cross this one off again. We're going to cross this one off and cross this one off. This is the only... Uh, picture that we want to look at here. It's only graph. This is the Nino 3.4 region. This is showing our SST temperatures all the way from, we'll see, we have November of 2024 through January of 2025, all the way to September of 2025. And what we see here is since about July, uh, mid-July, we really see right here in between July and August, our sea surface temperatures have rather gone down pretty quickly um, and have continued to decrease over the last month or two. And right now, as this is being shown, we'll go ahead and once again do this. We are at negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. So if we can withstand or if we can keep this uh, sea surface temperature and even decrease it just a little bit more, we are within La Nina conditions. Um, therefore, once again, that La Nina watch would be fulfilled. But once again, this is kind of just background information to kind of show you what's happening. We see our SSTs decreasing as we go into August through September. And right now they're still decreasing so that's just something to keep in mind. I want to go ahead and try to explain this the best I can. I put together a picture here. Still might not make any sense to you guys, but I'm trying to I'm trying my best to explain this. So essentially, let's say X is your SST uh, temperature from seasonal average. Um, so essentially, where your sea surface temperatures are greater than 0.5 degrees Celsius, 
um, and that would be indicated by those orange temperatures or the orange colors that we would saw earlier in the last slide. You would be under El Nino conditions, which once again, that is from warmer than average SSTs being 0.5 degrees Celsius or above. Now, as our SSTs are between negative 0.5 degrees Celsius and 0.5 degrees Celsius, that is when we are under an Enzo neutral winter, which is last forecast what we thought we were going to be within, which is a neutral winter, an average winter, some would say. Um, and this is, once again, between the hot and cold, this is a neutral, uh, or our SSTs are pretty close to average. Um, and that's what I'm trying to get across here. And then if your SSTs are less than negative 0.5 degrees Celsius, so we're talking negative 0.6 degrees Celsius and on, negative 0.7, negative 0.8, you would be within a La Nina, which is, once again, indicated by colder than average SSTs below negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. Typically, this brings colder conditions for the north um, in a very active Ohio Valley. This would be uh, similar conditions to what we discussed in last forecast. This would be a lot more snow for the deep south, particularly, or just a more active pattern, I should say, and then warmer than average uh, in terms of the winter that we do see, but very active south if we had an El Nino Unfortunately, we are going to be seeing a La Nina, so areas in the south we'll discuss in a brief moment, but that's not going to be the case. What I'm trying to get across here once again, and I'm sorry that I ramble sometimes, but this is where our SSTs are at currently, which is negative 0.5 degrees Celsius, and they're forecasted to keep dipping below this. So we're expected to be within a La Nina, and that's kind of explaining why. Now, here is just another, this is just kind of taking a graph from the last that'd be 12 years, um, and just kind of displaying what every month, what every three, uh, what every month was in terms of El Nino, La Nina, Enzo Neutral. We see last winter we are we were within an Enzo Neutral, and we're really, you can kind of see the evolution here. Uh, we're definitely getting colder and colder as we progress into um, August and through September and October. Now, here is the CPC probabilistic Enzo outlook. So this is essentially showing us the percent chance of seeing uh, you know, Enzo neutral La Nina El Nino. So as we go through October, sorry, I, I don't know why I said that. August, September, October, we have about a 50-50 chance. As we get into September, October, November, which is kind of around the time frame that we're in right now, obviously a 70% chance of a La Nina. We're, we're within La Nina conditions right now. And then through November, December, January, this dips to about a 65% chance of seeing these conditions sustain. And then by the time we get to December, January, February, this drops to about a 55. And then by the end of winter, as we get into January, February, March, we could look at more of an Enzo neutral pattern, um, but that would be late winter. Um, and that would be similar conditions to what we're going to be seeing out of a La Nina, just, uh, and I'll explain later the differences. But what we're seeing from this is especially within early winter, so we're talking November, December, January, we are going to be seeing more of a La Nina pattern. However, this could transition to an Enzo neutral as we get into the new year and getting into February and March. Um, and that's something that we're going to keep an eye out on. That could bring some changes to the forecast as well. Now, the next thing that I want to take a look at is our SST model outlooks. This is essentially a spaghetti model showing us about 20 different solutions. Um, on whether they think it's going to be an Enzo neutral, La Nina, or El Nino. This is negative 0.5 degrees Celsius. This is 0.5 degrees Celsius. So as we go, and let me try to see if I can do this, as we go above this line, that's an, Enzo, or that's an El Nino, which is indicated by the warmer than average. In between this line is an Enzo neutral, and then below this line is a La Nina. So you can see most models are keeping us within a... La Nina to an Enzo neutral, which is really indicated by this area right here. And we're really expecting uh, a pretty borderline La Nina winter. So what I mean by that is our sea surface temperatures are going to be very, very close um, to negative 0.5, negative 0.6, negative 0.4 even. Um, they're going to be right around that negative 0.5 threshold. So we're going to keep an eye out on that. Once again, that could bring some changes to the forecast. Now, here's what my winter thoughts now look like. So you, you already notice a little bit of a difference here, and I'm going to explain what all these regions mean. A lot of these are just more common sense. Obviously, the colors really correlate to what I'm trying to say here. So when we get to the north, especially in this blue region, you're going to be seeing colder than average temperatures 
a colder than average winter. This is what La Ninas typically do. They bring a very, very cold, especially northern plains. It's going to be frigid winter for you guys. Um, and I can even recall the last three or four La Ninas that we had a frigid, frigid north. And I'm talking very, very cold Arctic outbreaks. Essentially, uh, it's going to be cold for you guys up north. As we get into the Ohio Valley, even through portions of the South Central, I think that it's going to be very active. And so this green, it's not meaning rain, it's meaning active. So I want to clear that up as well because in the winter, obviously, the Ohio Valley, the Tennessee Valley, depending on temperatures, it's going to be a lot of snow. What I'm more trying to get across in this picture is it's going to be very active, and that's what I'm representing within the green. You're going to have a lot of precipitation. You're going to have a lot of storm systems moving through these areas, whether you get moisture coming in from the Gulf of America or whether you get these systems dropping off uh, from the West Coast moving east. I think either way, these uh, or the Ohio Valley through the Tennessee Valley and South Central will be kind of in the target for most of these storms. Now, what this highlighted pink color is, is this is my winter battle zone. I think these areas that are highlighted in the pink, which goes from Northern Texas all the way to Missouri. I think it really just depends on the storm system, whether you see rain, snow, or ice, the polar jet stream and the 32 degree line itself will always be very, very close to your location if you guys are within these areas. So really just depending on the storm system, you could either see a lot of snow, a lot of rain, or a lot of ice. Once again, it's really hard to predict whether you're going to be seeing a snowier winter or a wetter winter just in terms of precipitation because we don't know where those 32-degree lines will set up yet because the storm systems haven't even formed. So, But what I can say is it'll be active. There will definitely be snow chances for you guys in these pink regions. It's just whether that 32-degree line allows for snow, whether you see sleet, whether you see rain, whether you see ice, and this could be even determined by counties. And what I mean by that, and as I'll just draw an example because I know this pretty well. Uh, we could even say Branson, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri could get about five inches of snow because it's higher in elevation and colder, whereas Branson could be getting five-tenths of an inch of, or half an inch of rain. And that's just how it unfolds sometimes within these systems. And so really depending on elevation, depending on temperature, it'll change a lot in these storm systems. Now, unfortunately, the orange uh, is going to be warm and dry. I think especially the south will be warm and a lot more dry than average, and I think that's going to be an unfortunate pattern for you guys. But I do think that that's what we're going to be seeing as of right now according to what the Enzo evolution looks like where we're seeing a La Nina. So I'll be keeping you guys updated with the latest here. Once again, it's, it's beginning of October, so things are going to change a little bit some way or another. Um, and so I'll be making one more final outlook, I think one or two, we might have an updated winter thoughts, but then I will be eventually making my official winter outlook pretty soon um, to kind of give you guys an idea for what to expect for this winter. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you guys have a lot better idea of what to expect for this winter. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's Weather 101 Forecast, and I'll see you guys in the next one.